Hello, I like interesting audio gadgets and most probably you also like them. So that's why when uh, Aston Kern Acro CA1000 became available in our country, I contacted uh, reseller uh, Portative.ua to, uh, in order to get a loaner unit and they were so generous to provide me one it was even wrapped in plastic so it's, it was like brand new so I had to unpack it uh, and I'm really uh, thankful for them for doing that and uh, it's an interesting device you know it's perfectly suit my workflow I'm a programmer and I spend uh, like a big part of the day just sitting at my desk and doing some code and I like to do it with music. Usually I use uh, Fio K9 Pro connected to MacBook, but uh, having standalone device to play everything was my general idea. And uh, of course I could, could use uh, any player like, and probably I will uh, start using some Fio players with their stands for that, because Acro C1000 definitely fits this use case but its price is two thousand one hundred dollars and like i can't afford now more than one device of this price currently i own uh, ultima sp2000 and i'm thinking how can i get some money to do the upgrade for sp3000 when it will be available here and of course if it will be worth that most probably it will but like it's not 100 percent confidence Aston Kern itself uh, calls this device uh, carryable headphone amp and it's definitely an amp, uh, no questions here, it's also a digital to analog converter, it's amplifier and it's carryable, it has a big built-in battery, but they also added player functionality here and uh, uh, showed their own vision of so-called bricks, like we have uh, uh, Ibasu DX Pro line, Pro Max line, we have Fio M17 and now here is Aston Kern approach, of course Aston Kern invest most into the design. This device built using four 9068 uh, ESS digital tonal converters, why four? Well, because four is better than two, but maybe by the version of marketologies. In, in practice, of course, uh, difference between 2 and 4 will be indistinguishable, indistinguishable for, by human ears, but anyway, 4 is better. And also they added powerful amplifiers that can deliver up to 2 point watts or 2100 milliwatts uh, for 32 ohms load at super high gain. So pretty powerful device despite of the size. Anyway, let's have a closer look. So package is pretty simple but with nice polygraphy, good cardboard, some basic data like LDAC codec support uh, printed here and inside of this outer box we getting internal one. Of course package here is much simpler than flagship Ultima with wooden box and so on. But anyway, it's still Aston Kern, so everything is packaged nicely. On top, we're getting this device itself. And underneath, basically, cable. And here, if we will be lucky enough, we'll, we've got screen protector. But yeah, it's here. As you can see, accessory set is pretty minimalistic and it's definitely lacking some uh, solution to carry this thing some kind of big case to store it or at least you know some kind of lid to cover the device uh, from the top anyway and of course it would be nice for this price tire to have screen protector already pre-installed from the factory but that's all we are getting here so let me clean the table and then we'll proceed in terms of design of course it's expectedly good Aston Kern spent a lot of time designing it and by the company's own words they were inspired by Mars, Mars Rover. Some reviewers called that Art Deco style, but in my opinion it's, it's Tesla Cybertruck. Maybe even a bit more futuristic. So it's heavy, made of solid uh, aluminum, so really feels solidly built. Has rubber feet to stand on the table stand really reliably and you can easily operate the device opening this screen so you can 
raise it by this angle pretty convenient and we've got uh, four buttons on the front panel basically it's on off and three buttons to navigate the playback on the front you'll get full set of outputs so 6.3 mm and 3.5 mm unbalanced pentacon and 2.5 mm balanced and of course really great knob so it's just a pure joy to rotate it it has good encoder well-defined clicks all clicks are registered perfectly so it's really nice and feel solid you can actually operate it with screen down too so it's a matter of convenience if you're looking from somewhere from upper, upper angle you can just use it fold or you can carry it with you and pretend that it will be like the biggest uh, digital audio player in the world or at least one of the biggest on the back side we've got micro sd slot it has 256 own gigabytes of own memory but usually it's not enough for everyone so you can install micro sd card separate port for charging and separate port for data and audio pretty convenient that you can separate these two processes you can use some audiophilic uh, charger to lower the noise you can uh, connect your smartphone without being worrying that it will uh, drain the power of smartphone and you you get a good set of inputs actually besides usb you get optical in and coaxial in meaning that you can connect your old cd player tv set or something like that or you actually both so plenty of inputs and it has a linear in with two rca meaning that you also can connect something like vinyl player or similar and you can there is a line out so you can connect it to external amplifier too so from all points of view pretty decent device with good uh, with good usability actually screen is not the brightest one but taking into account that it's indoor device it will be enough for regular usage i think i didn't read the full technical specs but most probably it's 720p typical uh, screen for models that uh, Aston can use and as usual they put on the bottom this uh, home button either and now let's proceed to the firmware forgot to mention in the previous part that work time is about 10 hours from single charge battery inside is big but uh, power consumption of four digital tonal converters and powerful amplifier is also really big so screen looks a bit uh, dark but it's because of my studio lights and uh, basically it's uh, familiar Astel and Kern firmware with all their features I won't uh, focus on it this time I will show just a few distinguishing features of this uh, device and probably the main one is this uh, menu to set the external input and output terminals so you can select uh, between different outputs and here you can also change gain from the four values and in sound you can select crossfeed and equalizer but uh, the most unexpected feature for me when you activate one of digital inputs for example coaxial or optical or analog one you can't leave this menu so basically to make uh, external output working input working you need to stay in this menu from one hand it makes sense when it gets signal from one of these inputs of course it won't be able to play some files but uh, still you know it feels a bit limiting in general in terms of organization of everything it's uh, similar to all astron current and current players and in the settings you can select uh, some nice features like uh, AK Connect that allows this device integrate with other Astel and Kern devices in your network and many people will find Rune Ready feature pretty convenient a lot of people like uh, organizing uh, uh, files and playback with Rune so integrating this desktop device into Rune ecosystem will be a good idea in general firmware is pretty well polished but you know there is all constant sense of uh, slowness but probably not because firmware is slow itself just because animations is like uh, pretty slow and uh, 
Aston Kern didn't want to change anything in this aspect. They improved CPU recently, but anyway, it still uh, feels like, you know, everything is slow because it just slowly animates. So you push it and it moves in. And here is actually menu with streaming services. You can download some from external list and installed ones you can use here. So in this aspect, it's, everything is pretty convenient. And of course about the sound. You know, if you're familiar with Astel and Kern lineup, it's pretty, for me it's pretty easy to describe the sound to you. It uh, really reminds Astel and Kern SP2000T in the op-amp mode. So they are competitors in terms of price and actually sound is also pretty similar. I don't know, can it that be called surprising, but for me it's not, because uh, uh, SP2000T is a good option and why not to repeat its sound and beat another form factor with slightly more power. So basically it's natural with typical Astral and Kern coloration, doing slight emph emph emphasis on the low frequencies tightness. So, Bass go deep uh, to maximum depth, it's not accented, but it's try sometimes this player tries to make it a bit tighter to make it a bit more fun. And of course at the same time it offers good detailization, perfect control, nice resolution, balance, when necessary it delivers nice slam, so everything that you can expect from the well created low frequencies or well done for it low frequencies are present here. So first example from will be uh, the Reset from the Tron original soundtrack remixed, remixed by Glitch Mob. It's pretty fun that uh, there are a lot of fans of Tron movie, but uh, all attempts to create sequels or remakes constantly fails. So fanbase is big, but it just doesn't want to, to go to movie theaters. Actually, I liked that uh, Tron Legacy and I liked soundtrack and the Glitch Mob remix just perfect because they've added as you can easily guess, some glitches, and it's, it fits perfectly to that uh, vibe of the movie, computers and stuff. And uh, of course here it presented nice bass line and uh, it delivered uh, really well by this player. But of course bass here is pretty universal uh, and uh, that's why I selected another track by Music Anuda, so since 2017 when I last uh, 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 bought their album, they released few live concerts, few singles, so I missed some new material, and it's a single from 2020, sorry if someone uh, speak it, speaks Italian, Il Vago stra uh, Straordinario, Straordinario, so my uh, Italian pronunciation probably it's even worse than English. But uh, in terms of materials it's just a perfect music anuda with great uh, acoustic double bass part by Ferruccio Spinetti and uh, great uh, emotional vocals by Pedro Mahoney and both of these parts represented really well by this player with nice rich saturated double bass and emotional uh, vocals with that Aston Kern signature fluid mid so they build the perfect contrast and really dips you into music and actually they have another single from 2021 but it's something really not typical for them something uh, that I didn't get yet Mid frequencies are typical Astel and Karen, almost natural with good of course resolution with uh, balance of weight. At the same time player is not adding dynamics, weight or emotions but represents really well what is present in the records. But at the same time it has that signature coloration with fluid transition of notes but at the same time they transition like fluidly but uh, perfectly distinguished uh, and outlined. It's it's hard to describe by words, but if you heard some top uh, Aston Care players, probably you've got that idea of coloration, and it's present here, giving you additional wow effect for the music listening. And uh, it's not super critical for the quality of materials, but of course, better material for this player is like almost. Uh, a necessary requirement, not because of it will highlight something, it won't, uh, it will just play it as is, but just to unveil the full potential, it's better to take something perfectly recorded. 
But the, actually the first track I will take, it's uh, not the perfectly recorded one, because it's the pioneers of folk metal, not sure about the correct pronunciations once again, but I've heard in some videos that uh, this uh, band pronounced as Krokan. Correct me if I'm wrong, I will be really grateful. And it's the pioneers of uh, folk metal, uh, like I like Elevate Tie, but it's definitely obvious that uh, these guys were like source of inspiration for the Elevate Tie. And uh, another great reason to include this band here is their constant support of Ukraine. They even uh, sacrificed few big festivals because of that, because they're just always sharing support for, for, for Ukraine and I'm really grateful for that. And uh, actually track named The Marching Song of... Uh, actually, of what? How to see the full track name? I probably had to Google it, but I didn't. And uh, actually it's a really good uh, folk uh, metal piece. So the marching song of Fiak Makhu, uh, Makhu, Makhu. Sorry, once again, have no idea about the correct uh, pronunciation, but it's really like great Celtic folk march tunes in the beginning with drums, with pipes, and so on, and then it goes straight to really catchy metal riffs with a bit aggressive vocals. So nice, great contrast uh, and great songs and. Great group, actually. Of course, in terms of records, it's uh, far from being perfect, but even with not perfectly recorded material, uh, CL1000 deals uh, really well. And second track is also heavy metal, but more classical one. I thought that Halloween is coming, all streaming services offering like Halloween playlist. I looked at that playlist and it's like meh. It's Ghostbusters song, Michael Jackson thriller, and uh, so on, like nothing to be excited about. But uh, then I recalled my f one of my most favorite songs, probably by my most favorite band, and it's, it's really scary. It's Fear of the Dark, and it's perfectly performed, recorded, of course it's also not perfect, but anyway pretty good. And, of course, it's uh, Bruce Dickinson vocals, great guitars, drum parts, so it's just perfect heavy metal song from every point of view. It's a popular stadium banger for this group. And, of course, a lot of live videos when Br Bruce Dickinson performs like God. And uh, that's why it's here. Vocal is really well and nuanced. Uh, guitar sounds really nicely, so good way to listen to this track and before the Halloween. And uh, treble like also nothing to write home about, but of course I'm kidding, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great treble like, uh, I mean it has no, no coloration, no specifics, it just sounds as it should be for expensive player. Great extension, nice, uh, really nice layering. Uh, Ultima is slightly better, but uh, layering is uh, still really good here, giving you that tons of overtones and a lot of uh, small nuances, details of the room where it was recorded and all that stuff. So basically really high-end uh, treble for the portable player or, or carryable amplifier, still not sure. For me it's still a player, first of all. So, first example, it's Porgy and Bass by Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald. Lot of, lot of uh, musicians did cover versions for this track. Probably it's somewhere in top 10 of most covered songs ever. But of course, Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald, it's just uh, one of the best or even the best. Uh, it's topic of discussion, but anyway. Good uh, record with a lot of uh, treble. It was recorded like in 1957, if I remember right. But still, record quality is pretty decent and they preserve treble. And because of that, uh, listening with this player gives you a lot of nuances and really pleasant uh, experience of uh, diving into music. And uh, 
last final test track. It's a pose by Poppy Ackroyd. And it's really, really minimalistic, but uh, this type of audiophiliac tracks that are really minimalistic, but at the same time recorded perfectly. And a lot of things here goes to the overtones area, and this player delivers it flawlessly. One of the best in terms of treble performance of I've, uh, that I've heard, but not the best as we have Ultima, for example. Speaking about the headphones pairing, of course it drives even uh, pretty tough full-size headphones, including uh, vast majority of planars, uh, but not inclu including some really tough to drive models that everyone knows. And from another hand, it has really good black background, except of super sensitive in-ear monitors, then you, there you can hear a slight background noise. But on the low gain it will be pretty acceptable, at least for me, and uh, with not so super sensitive earphones it, there won't be any issues. And uh, actually speaking about the comparisons, to be honest I don't think there is much sense to compare it with everything, because it's a really different device that stands from the crowd in terms of form factor and set of features. Uh, like SP2000T, it's the, uh, his portable brother offering the similar sound. Ultima is better, with more saturated overtones, with more rich mids and slightly better emotions delivery. But difference of course is not as big as price gap. And like the closest competitor that I own now, it's Fio M17. But Fio M17 in my opinion slightly actually better more dynamic and more emotional when em emotions are present in the track, so subjectively I like feel a bit more. But of course in terms of usability, features and form factors this player delivers more value. Uh, so I'd really like to own it, but uh, for me price is a bit too high, but for many people who just want some all-in-one device for the desktop, it could be a really great option, because like if you buy it, it will be for a really long time, and it will be able to drive almost everything with giving you a good sound quality. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention, and of course have a great day.